My thesis on any industry is like there's a set of information that's available that you can like read. And then there's the inside information. And the inside information is typically not written down because A, it's complicated and annoying to write it down, so most people don't do it. And then it's only available to like the people who really understand it. And like, why are they gonna write it down? Like yeah. it's an incentive thing, right? Like if you if you know something special, why would you share it with everybody else? And so the trick is to understand the physics, I think of it as like an in, of an industry is not to try and read everything, but to just go find the people who know it the best and then convince them to teach it to you because you're gonna learn faster from, I, I think, think of it as like information, right? Like I can go and read all these things and try and piece it together myself, or I can go find the five people who have already read all of the things, plus they have their own knowledge and have synthesized it and I can just ask them to teach it. And, and neither of us are big fans of reading large amounts of, of stuff, right? Yeah, Much easier to yeah. learn talking to people and uh, in that way, right? Like, I'll read, but the only thing I get from reading this stuff typically is, like, topic areas. Yeah. I don't know. I can't. It, like, prepares you to go ask questions, but then the actual learning sort of comes from the questions and answers. Yeah, so we just ran a process. We did it flat iron, and then we just did it again, which is like, all right, let's just go learn everything there is about this. And the way you do it is you go find the people. Yeah. It's all about the experts. And, you know, the hit, what you were mentioning is like the hit rate on those experts is really low because most people aren't experts. They think they are, but they're not. Uh, or they think they understand something, but actually what they understand is something someone else told them. And you got to go find that person. Uh, so yeah, we just, Meet this person. Meet this person. Meet How this do you person. figure out if someone's full of shit? Like they have all these, you know, doctor, yeah. MD, whatever, big, big job at uh, HSS, or and, but they actually don't know the incentive structure of the health system. Yeah. So we did this intuitively at Flatiron, meaning I, I didn't realize I was doing this, and so as a result, it was like less effective. And then at Curie, we do this explicitly. Those are maybe not the right. Yeah. Words, yeah. But whatever. One we planned. The other one we didn't plan. Uh, the non-planned one with with Flatiron was we just asked people like, how does it work? And when you got an unsatisfying answer of like how something worked and you said, but how does that part work? And then you realize like, okay, this person actually doesn't understand because you just kind of keep asking like, but how does that work and how does that work? And the beauty for us at least I think, and I'll talk about the better way, but at Flatiron was we actually didn't know how it worked and we weren't doctors. So it was really easy for us to show up in a room and be like, I don't, I don't know anything about this yeah. and not give up our credibility because we could basically be like, hey, remember we sold this company to Google? So like we're not morons. Uh, and so people would engage and then we were just very comfortable saying, I don't know. Yeah. And that, to me, that was the trick. I was like, I don't know. I'll just show up in a room and say, I don't know how this works. Can you explain it to me? And then when someone says this, I'd be like, I don't really know what that means either. What I learned from my, one of my Curie co-founders is there's a better way to do this or a little more efficient uh, which is you ask people how they know. And it's just like the dumbest simple, I can't believe I spent 10 years of my life not asking this question. And then you know, after we had sold a company for $2 billion, I still didn't know how to do this. That's how I knew there's always somebody better than you. Uh, and Tom taught it to me and he's basically like, yeah, if you talk to somebody and they say, well, this thing is true, just ask them how they know it. And you're like, oh yeah, that's like the best. And then most people will say, well, I heard it or I read it and then you say, okay, where did you read it? And then they like, they're, they're lying and, or they don't really know. Uh, but the ones who do know, they're like, oh, I'll show you exactly how I know it and I'll teach it to you. But you just have to be very comfortable asking that question because it's a very awkward question to ask somebody because you're kind of insinuating that you don't believe them. And so you just have to get really good at asking the question in a non-antagonistic way, which is more of an EQ skill. It took me a while to figure that out. Uh, because I know like if I'm in with somebody, I can definitely come off as like aggressive, uh, which I'm aware of. So I try to like mute it with a joke or something. We just worked on these skills. Yeah. Like, all right, how do I get someone to explain how they know something? And then the other thing Tom taught me was you, if you ask some, like if I said to you, you know, what's the average contract value of, of ramp or whatever? Yeah. And you're like, well, it varies. Most people will just stop at that. Oh, I don't know, the, it varies. And actually, you can get, you can kind of guide people to give more specific answers. So I say, okay, well, is it like closer to a dollar or a hundred thousand dollars? And they say, oh, okay, it's like way closer to a dollar. And you go, okay, well, is it like closer to five thousand dollars or what? And you can kind of guide people to 
a more specific answer if you give them choices. Parameters within. It's, it's a funny thing. If someone yeah. doesn't want to tell you something, right, and, it, right, and you throw something out that you know is wrong, but you're not exactly sure, you know, Zach, how, uh, whatever, how, how big do you think Curie can be? And, and you're like, oh, well, I don't know, it could be big. And I'm like, right, but like $10 million probably, right? And you're like, no, 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 way bigger. Way bigger. Like, yeah. like, like at least five. And you didn't want to tell me originally, but when I framed it so low, it forced you to correct me, right? No one wants to let you sit out there with false information as well. It's like an interesting yes. thing to get information from. And this, this, this little tactic, not the only one, but we used like at Curie when we were first doing homework on it, which was, you know, this core thesis that like, yes, drug discovery is expensive, but the cost to do it was coming down. And you would talk to people and, they, and they'd say, oh, well, drug discovery is expensive. It's, you know, it's really expensive. It's really expensive. It's really expensive. How expensive? And they're like, I don't know. It's like, you know, millions and millions of dollars. Well, is, it, is it five or, or 30? Right? And you would just kind of like slowly and then say, well, this part's really expensive. Okay. How expensive is that part? And then you figure out, ah, oh, the cost is over here, the cost is over here. You're kind of building this mental model of what the actual true facts are rather than like people's perceptions of yeah. those facts. The other thing, there's this like subtle, I think of it as a momentum uh, thing, which is as you, this is the third thing I learned from Tom. So basically, we're, we're going to talk about Tom yeah. in a second. I, want to, I mean, we've, we've given some lessons of Tom, but maybe maybe just because we're referencing him. Tom is one of the more interesting people I've met in my life and effectively a co-founder. Is he actually No, he's a, co a co full co-founder. Co Tom Curry. was the um, the co-founder of a startup that I was an investor in called Imogen, which is focused on enabling primary care docs to have diagnostic superpowers, basically like bringing diagnostics, things like x-ray, fundoscopy, uh, you know, diabetic retinopathy scan, whatever. Uh, a set of diagnostic tools to the primary care doc that typically could not do it on their own. He was a co-founder of that business. I was an angel investor uh, and then a board member, now still a board member. And yeah, I just got to know him through like, I don't know. One of the more interesting, smart people, like I, I Set, yeah. well, last time we were here, actually, uh, an hour before, I uh, I sat with him at a bar. There was like 50 other people there that I should have been talking to. And I was just so fascinated by him, like how his mind works. He doesn't have any news apps. He doesn't like, he no. only learns from first party, like, or first uh, uh, party sources or whatever. Well, uh, he just like, he, he just does this process, but like all the time. Yeah. It's I, I like, like the it, only thing he does. It, yeah, he'll just like learn the yeah. from a root level up, and then Correct. just keep verifying all of this stuff. Right? Yeah, and I just I got to know him from being you know founders in the same city, and realized like wow, I you know I thought I was like pretty good at this, but like this he's better. Uh, so what was the third thing that you you learned from him? Oh yeah, so his so he so he's the one that taught me to ask like how do you know, and yeah. then he's the one that taught me to do the sides. By the way, this is all post flat iron. Yeah. To be very clear, like this is all things I learned after we had sold it. Uh, the third one is that as you do this little fact finding mission, now you become an interesting source of facts. And there's just like, ver and so now when you go to the next person, you have something compelling to share with them that gets them engaged and gets them interested because you know something they don't know. And you see this momentum build where now when you're talking to an expert, you actually have something to share, which gets them to engage, which gets them to share more. Mm. And that's how you get to the cycle where you know everybody. Because by the 15th or maybe it's 50th or whatever conversation, you've learned like little nuggets all along the way. So like I can tell you really interesting things about you know, the cost of drug discovery or the failure modes or like how the economics of these venture funds work because I learned them as I was doing it. I could use that in the next conversation, share it. That person's like, oh, okay, maybe this person isn't an idiot. Like I just learned something. And then they're more like, they are more likely to share. You just have to, do the work yeah like just tons of calls that's and, it and you did this intuitively with flat iron and got to the point that people were saying to you over and over again i i put stuff in and i can't get it yeah, right like phrase yeah exactly. they, they like kept, and finally you got to the root of like what they meant which was basically there's unstructured information going in through dictation through handwritten notes through whatever it's going into this ehr and on the other side they want insights about that unstructured information. Yeah, they want to ask questions. And they want to ask questions not of one patient, but of multiple. And so, you know, I put data in. What data? Which data? And you, yeah, that's what we realized. We realized that the unstructured data had a lot of critical information in it. 
we... What is... The unstructured information would be like... Doctor's note. Doctor wrote down, hey, patient is doing this, this, and this, and showing the, signs the, the simplest thing to think about, and this is in oncology, but it's true in other areas too, um, the, the, the narrative, you know, I met so-and-so, she has this diagnosis, we talked about this thing, we're going to, you know, so like what the docs, sometimes will dictate it. Uh, you could think the result of a scan, so of imaging, where the, the actual radiology report that comes back is like, a, it's a PDF. Yeah. And in some kind of cases, it's actually like faxed and scanned in. Um, pathology reports, so when they're actually looking at the, the tumor tissue itself, again, PDFs. And so in, in these documents were and are critical information about the patient and their disease, the treatments that they were receiving, and then the outcomes, what happened, right? Like, did they get, broadly speaking, better or worse? Uh, and there's a lot of nuance in like how you define better or worse and what data and the language people use. But basically we're like, oh, all this data is like in here, but we just assume it's, un it's like untenable to ask questions of because it's in like a narrative format. And going back to the thesis of like, well, tech people know some things better. You know, I looked at that and like, okay, that's just like a data curation problem. And if you build custom tools like software tools for data curation you can take things that take hours and turn them into minutes because you just like you know you're not in excel and tabbing between multiple screens and you can do really smart like task allocation and all just stuff i had seen it it's not rocket science like you just seen it at google they used like they had used tools to tag spam and they had like lots of reviewers in india who were doing this and you know it worked really well 